Right. Uh, good morning. Welcome, guys. Oh. Welcome to today's uh, session on youth ministry. Um, let's pray and we'll get started. Okay. Uh, Father, we come before you. We thank you, Lord, for this beautiful day. Thank you for the privilege that we have to come to our presence and to learn about you and your kingdom. Lord, help us uh, to uh, understand the subject well. And I pray that we will be your vessels that you would use us to uh, establish your kingdom here on earth lord in jesus name i pray amen okay uh, let me share my screen so yesterday we started off by uh, learning about the challenges in youth ministry uh, in in specifically uh, we looked at the challenges uh, that a youth pastor or a youth leader uh, might experience, right? Um, and those were not the only challenges, uh, some of the things that we learned yesterday. If I were to uh, summarize very quickly, um, the first point, the first challenge that we can uh, encounter is impatience, um, is expecting results way too quickly and not being patient enough to, uh, you know, to endure the race. One example we saw was the difference between a marathon runner and a 100-meter dash sprinter. We need to t train and teach ourselves to, uh, you know, to function like a marathon runner on the long, for the long run, uh, right? to endure with faithfulness. And then time management. If we don't manage time, uh, our time will be managed by other people. And then be discouragement is another challenge. Uh, various reasons and practical um, steps to battle discouragement. Uh, one of which was finding a mentor and having a hobby uh, is crucial. Uh, and uh, clear communication, um, clear communication is uh, necessary. And then finally, our intimacy and our walk with the Lord um, is crucial uh, in in your journey in ministry. Okay, uh, uh, we finished with that section today. Uh, we will uh, look at some of the challenges uh, the, that are faced by today's youth. Okay, um, so uh, we, we finished challenges that are faced by youth pastor and youth leaders, but now let's look at some of the challenges that our youth uh, of this day and age uh, face. Okay, so... Um, the youth of today are facing incredible challenges in their day-to-day -day life all over the world. This generation experienced change more often than the teens from 40 years ago, all of which results in the challenges they face every day. Okay, um, so I mean, I'm not sure if uh, you heard of uh, your parents or anyone who's older say, okay, in our time, we didn't have all these problems uh, and if you translate it in some of our Indian languages, it becomes more dramatic, you know, like say Tamil or Kannada or whatever. It, can be, uh, it becomes more, uh, it's like in our time, we didn't have all these troubles. How come you are having all these problems? Uh, <laughs> but the times have changed, isn't it? The challenges are challenges. That's the fact, okay? The uh, generation, uh, yeah, 40 years ago, the challenges that was faced by the teenagers or the youth back then are not the same because the times were different. Uh, everything was different, right? Uh, the peer pressure, talk about everything else uh, was, was just different, right? Um, so one of the challenges, one of the main challenges that uh, the youth of today um, are going through is mental health. Uh, mental health, okay? And some of the, if we I'm not going to go through the stats now, but if we just were, uh, there's a global survey that was done and some of the numbers and the statistics are related to the, this issue with young people all over the world is scary. It's staggering. It's very, very real. Right? It's very real, the challenges uh, of, when it comes to mental health. Okay. Um, one of the key things that's adding to it is stress, uh, which is related to life choices, academic achievements, and the need to accomplish. 
the need to be someone something some super, you know super the need to be the winner all the time that's what a society uh, uh, education system you know teaches us portrays you know if you are not number 1 you are waste you are zero uh, you know the stress that adds to a child uh, or teenager uh, related to life choices right i uh, see this uh, image uh, already there so you know as soon as uh, it starts at a very early very early age isn't it uh, maybe not till your 10th grade what not but then after that you're thinking okay which school and uh, which college uh, which career path do i choose do i choose commerce or science or arts why why should i choose that or should i go to bible college uh, should i do this should i do that so many choices today uh, right do i become an entrepreneur or do i become uh, do i should i only be an employee what do i do um, right so like just that the scratch their heads they're filled with anxiety because there's so many choices that's available right i mean just look at um uh at least i'm sure like at this day and age um, there are at least uh, 500 different brands of shampoo <laughs> i or more thousand maybe you know but uh, but there was a time where i only knew two brands that was available and which made very easy for me to pick one okay if this is another one this one you know but now uh, imagine people having to choose and everybody wants to choose the best right and you have to choose the best out of the 500 and that itself is kind of giving you anxiety it's like oh no i hope i choose the best i'm missing out on this uh it's related to everything isn't it so many different schools so many different colleges every school is an international school now um you know every college is world renowned college uh etc etc and everybody has to choose the best career path uh, that will bring them that will make them successful and what not and all of this has added uh, to the challenges that the youth of today face which is very real isn't it um so that's one of the key uh, challenges that that uh, young people face this day and the other uh, challenge uh, which is very real is loneliness loneliness okay they are in a group but they feel left out they are in a part of like say 20, 10 to 20 people group but they feel lonely they feel alone uh, right stays away because socially not accepted or the fear of being rejected okay they stay away because they are not accepted socially that means in a group or they they stay away because they are afraid of being rejected saying it's like i look at this fellow hey please don't be a, a my friend i don't like you i don't like the way you act blah 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 etc right um and that kind of leads them to a certain trend like they want to be accepted they don't want to be rejected so if this group uh, accepts only those who smoke and drink because of peer pressure because of the of uh, uh, fear of being left out and being alone they start smoking they start drinking why because only if i do this they will accept me otherwise they'll reject me and the fear of being lonely uh, is there but yet this generation is called as the swipe generation right they are like you know they just keeps can keep swiping 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 um you know they just bury their heads into this thing uh <laughs> you know what i'm saying right you know they have so many followers or they can be following so many people in facebook have 2000 friends 5000 friends uh have so many followers on instagram etc etc but still feel lonely uh you know you understand what i'm talking about right guys but this generation is going through that that is a huge challenge among our youth this today in day and age they are connected but yet so disconnected right i do you agree with me what do you think somewhat somewhat Okay. Another thing, another challenge is uh, so one thing leads to another, right? Is happiness. Uh, now, one the the previous point talks about they stay away uh, because they are not accepted or the fear of being rejected. 
but then that is connected to the next point which is happiness the need to feel happy or to show themselves that they are happy all the time okay think about the posts on social media once again i'm sorry if i'm sounding repetitive uh, when i take the examples of facebook and instagram but please forgive me but that's the fact isn't it uh, the need to feel to show themselves happy all the time how often do you see someone's uh, posting a negative post i had the worst day today i am sad uh, you know or do you see any photos uh, without a filter that makes them look extra fair or extra handsome extra beautiful uh, you know or uh, have, they have to take a picture of what they are eating me i'm eating pani puri <laughs> uh you know i am having coffee in this cafe uh you know all of that to show that oh man i'm happy uh you know so a couple uh, f- let's just look at this example okay so the need to feel happy or show themselves happy um there are hardly any negative posts in social media that an individual posts about oneself Uh, a couple is always happy always vacationing always partying the display picture is always dashing uh, you know this creates an impression so okay listen to this very carefully guys this creates an impression to others watching on social media feel that they are not uh, they are not happy enough okay so not just so, so you there's so many different layers to it right so a person who's always posting this my you know we're saying oh, i'm happy i'm in this place i'm going to vacation for this amazing place you know i'm having this uh, coffee and this cafe uh, i my life is amazing even maybe you know even if it's not true doesn't care right doesn't matter so what the posts like that creates to another person an impression is that and they're looking at these posts they're going through this and like they say oh this person has gone there oh that person is doing that this is happening oh that is happening but none of this is happening in my life my life is bad it's terrible you guys with me right so that creates an impression to others watching on social media feel that they are not happy enough so what happens they fall into a trap of comparison only if i had enough money only if my life was like this only if my life was like that only if i could go to that place for vacation only if i had that car only if i did this only if i had so many followers on youtube subscriptions etc etc they fall into a trap of comparison that leads to competitiveness and that kills the joy of the person living you know uh, instead of enjoying the present they have just destroyed their life living in the present so the need to feel happy uh, all the time uh, is another huge challenge that's faced by our generation another huge challenge is time right uh, we spoke about time management in the previous challenge for youth leaders but here for the youth as well time is a huge challenge but in a different way Like today's demands of a 24/7 world keep millennials busier than any other generation before them. Students and young adults are incredibly busy. Youth want instant microwave results, shortcuts. How can I learn guitar in 10 days without hurting my fingers? Right? They want microwave results. Uh they you know and they are doing like a million things in 24 hours <laughs> right uh, i mean i i kind of feel uh, i feel sad for kids these days because you see parents putting them in 100 different workshops you know uh, after after dance class there's music class after music class there's swimming class after music after swimming class there's football class after football class there's badminton class i mean poor kid you know <laughs> uh, teen it, but that's the reality of t- of today's day and age is 24 hours is not enough and i don't think 48 hours in a day also will be enough for this generation 
because they are always engaged, they're always busy. Uh, being productive and efficient, that is a different story. <laughs> okay, well, that's a different discussion altogether. But the point is that they are always engaged, they're always busy, they want to be doing something or the other. Right? So with so little time, uh, you know, according to them, their opinion, millennials want to know that they that the time they do invest in an activity is worthwhile. So if this busy generation wants to give the time to your youth meeting, if they want to come to this youth meeting, they will ask themselves this question, is that going to be worthwhile my time? Is that meeting time worthy? And so that kind of leads to another question, another challenge to us as youth leaders is, okay, how can we make this program time efficient that they would feel the need to come to our programs? Because time is a huge challenge to this generation, right? And some of the other challenges that's just listed out there is sexuality. Uh, it's not just sexual purity. Sexual purity in a society, it goes without saying where you know, pressure and temptation exists, but it's also the identity. Now we, you know, we just don't have two genders nowadays that the people are talking about. It's not just male and female. It's, it's, <laughs> it's not just LGBTQ, A, B, C, D, X, Y, Z. There's like all the letters in the alphabet. It's, it's there. And so, and again, remember the challenges, uh, the first challenge was the choices. And there, and suddenly, out of nowhere, there are all these choices that's available to the teenagers. It's like, oh, you don't just have to be a, a male or a female. There's so many other letters that you can choose from. And you believe that, right? It's scary, isn't it, guys? It's all adding to that mental health thing. So sexuality is a huge thing, let alone sexual purity. Okay, uh, the church needs to talk about sexual purity to our young people. This is, the, oh, this is the one institution that should be talking and we are not. And hence, therefore, they are getting all their ideas of sexuality from the world. The world what does the world say? You can have multiple sexual partners. You can sleep. You can have sex with the opposite sex before marriage. Uh, you know, it's okay to have multiple boyfriends or girlfriends. You, it's okay to be, live, have, you know, be in a live-in relationship. Chalta hai. It's okay, you know? So our kids are getting all this idea of sexual, pure sexuality from the world, which is dangerous and scary. That's another huge challenge that's uh, you know faced by our young people this day. And the secondly is identity. Now we can just talk on this for an entire hour. Identity. Like, uh, Issues with, okay, who am I? Am I worth it? Uh, you know, do I mean something? Am I someone? Uh, you know, we look for our value in our own abilities and accomplishments. We are driven to continue to perform so that we can feel that we have worth. Right? The need to feel something, the need to feel successful. Who am I? I need to be somebody. What is my identity? Right. Um, so have, having an identity is like a circle thing. What you think of yourself, uh, you know, will have a tendency. And that tendency will lead to action. And that action will lead to consequences. Okay. Are you with me, guys? So identity, like, let's, talk, let's start at 12 o'clock on top. So you, you have identity, tendency, action consequences okay entire circle so identity let's take a good a good a good identity for example let's just take uh, so if i ask uh, say dave uh, dave uh, what is your identity this is just an example dave okay and you say uh, what is your identity dave what how do you, what do you identify yourself as um, you might say let's say oh i'm a cricketer now so you go by that that identity say i'm a cricketer and what is the tendency of a cricketer? Okay, you will tend to practice. Like, okay, you're going to invest your time practicing uh, your sport. Okay, 
that's your tendency and that leads to action where you're practicing you're you're practicing hours in a day and that leads to the consequence what is the consequence of those actions is you becoming a better cricketer you becoming a better sports person are you with me now let's flip it around to the negative thing let's say that uh, you know your identity is so uh, challenged and you feel like you are worthless uh, you are fit for nothing or good for nothing because of what people have told you uh, etc etc so that your identity and your tendency is that you are always sitting alone in your room in the dark room uh, you know you're sulking over the fact that oh, i'm good for nothing and fit for nothing and what not and that can lead to some dangerous actions which is suicidal tendencies uh, you know and hurting yourself or whatever the, the list can go on and what's the consequences of those actions is never pleasing isn't it so addressing identity related issues is a huge thing because this issue is is very real it's uh, among our, our generation in this day and age okay um absence of a father figure or comes from a broken family or from a family where there is constant violence and abuse okay there are at least 100 different forms of abuse by the way result they looks for love in all the wrong places so a teenager or a youth who's coming from such a background where uh, they don't have someone like a father figure who's so crucial or a mother figure uh, you know or comes from a family of abuse and uh, violence and what they are longing for at the end of the day is acceptance i want to be accepted i want to feel loved and they may, and they become very vulnerable you know what is vulnerable you know it's like they will go look for love in all the wrong places they will pour out you know everything about them to the wrong person and that person will use them abuse them and throw them away and then this person is hurt and is offended and lives with bitterness and then they go into a shell saying i'm not going to trust anyone with my life i'm not going to open my heart to anyone and that even to god i i don't feel like going to church i'm not going to go there because i don't feel anything i'm hurt love is not true if this is what love is if love if their idea and understanding of love is abuse then they are not going to accept love and that's a huge reality and if all as if that all of that was not enough there is the media the big godfather i should say the negative media influence what is it saying okay you you must be beautiful you must be fair you must be white you must buy this product all the products that's available is to make you look better than how you look better how you look now if you wear this t-shirt you will look fine if you wear our jeans you will look better you will look more handsome if you wear this shoe you will look smart if you wear put this makeup thing you know what i'm saying if you use this soap you will smell better if you uh you guys get what i'm saying right no? okay sorry um so to be worthwhile you must be beautiful avoid pain and pursue pleasure at all costs avoid pain uh you know uh no pain no gain is an old saying uh, you know it's it's no longer applicable applicable to this generation pursue pleasure at all costs uh doesn't matter how it comes pursue it uh sex is a recreational pursuit okay there are no consequences and everybody does it right it's like it's no longer sacred it's no longer holy it's no longer pure it's it's like okay anybody can have it anybody can do it there's no there's no consequences at all there's no there's no you know you don't need consent etc etc uh violence and vengeance is an ex- is an acceptable way to deal with your problems uh, money brings happiness all of these are just some of the points as mentioned uh you can think of more but are some of the points that the media uh brings in these are all the negative influences of the media on our generation right and as if all of that was not enough for challenges there's more dependence on technology 
right the society has given this generation a name as the ice generation what does it mean internet and cellular okay instant access to information has changed how they understand truth instant access to information right everything is at, at their fingertips if they want to know about anything whatever knowledge they want is at their fingertips they don't feel the need to check the credibility and the authenticity of the source crucial guys this one they don't feel the need to check the credibility and the authenticity of the source uh, that's why you know before we go to any doctor uh, our first doctor is dr google okay guilty okay. how do i get rid of this pain google okay i am having this what can be the problem uh it can be a very scary doctor sometimes it's like oh this is you know google will come back and say oh this is a problem you are going to die in 30 days and you're scared now and now you really want to go to the real doctor uh right i'm not sure if it is, is it related with that but but this generation is that it's 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 they are the ice generation as the society have uh, has labeled them internet and cellular you you disconnect them from their phones or tell them there's no internet for half an hour they'll start manifesting like a principality <laughs> you know uh, like oh you you no 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 i can't live without it no you it's not happening you know um <laughs> uh take this out youth can have a full on romantic relationships by texting by text messaging or facebook their whole idea of relationship is not even face to face anymore it's theoretical hypothetical it's a device rather than a person you guys are you following me you you realize the danger that this uh, you know that this generation is is this this the way they're thinking right their idea the fact that they can have a full on romantic relationship over text messages and facebook and the need for them to not want a face to face relationship anymore is dangerous for them a relationship right now is uh, you know with the opposite, with the other person will be this this is my relationship with you it's a device it's no longer a person and that is so sad because you and i were made for relationships you and i were made for one another right for each other isn't it for community right so dependence on technology is another challenge um and so having understood all of that so what are some of the topics uh you know that uh we can do uh, uh you know that some that a youth ministry should address um you know young people are hurting as we may, as we saw they are hungry they are searching uh, they are reasoning and are connected like never before they may not know the truth but they are hungry for it they are seeking for the truth okay they are looking for genuine unconditional love ultimately they are looking for pastors leaders who will walk the talk and represent jesus rightly okay what this generation is looking for is authentic pastors and leaders they are looking for authentic fathers kingdom fathers who will represent jesus rightly okay knowing the challenges is not enough it is a starting place so now that we know these are all their challenges uh just knowing what they are going through is not enough isn't it what is our next step we must prayerfully work on finding practical and biblical solutions for every problem that's 
ever there under the sun, God has created a solution. For every question, there is an answer. And if we only learn to seek and depend on God for those strategies, for those answers, uh, we can answer our youth in this day and age as well. Right? So Christian youth of today must not only be taught God's word, they must be mentored and discipled in ways to apply the word to their lives. They must be inspired to live more like Christ, remembering Jesus is the model. They have, they, be, they have to be taught how to be doers of the word. Okay, so considering all of this, some of the... Uh, you know, some of the topics that you can do is as follows. Um, you know, everything that we could think of is here. Um, identity. Uh, we can use the resource Who We Are in Christ, APC Publication, Foundations, No Gossip, Sexual Purity, um, When Love Equals Sex in Today's World, Overcoming Sexual Sin, Sex as God's Idea, Teaching About the Sexuality uh, you know, and the Source. Uh, what is God's idea of sex? Overcoming series like say, overcoming depression, overcoming anxiety, fear, addiction, temptations, emotions that destroy, uh, you know, peer pressure. You know, these are all the real, real challenges that the youth are encountering this day and age, isn't it? Like we discussed. Uh, topics like intimacy with God, daily walk with God, uh, you know, emphasizing the importance of that and living a lifestyle of worship, uh, salvation, a little bit of you know, doctrinal uh, stuff is very important as well, like baptism of the Holy Spirit, lifestyle evangelism, discipleship, prayer, personal prayer, fasting prayer, intercessory prayer, uh, how to read the word, how to study the word, uh, and, you know, to, to learn about the authenticity and the credibility of the Bible so that they can, when they are sharing the gospel with other people, they will know and they will know how to defend the word of God. Thing, hey, this I believe in the Bible because it's credible and it's authentic and it's been proven. Like teaching about the basic apologetics stuff, you know, love and relationships, fulfilling God's purpose, etc., and so much more. Right? It doesn't have to end there, right, guys? Um, and so much more. And the list goes on. Okay, um, so I just want to pause here, and uh, once again, I, I, I don't want to go into. Uh, the other chapter just yet. So I'll stop presenting. Uh, do you have any thoughts, any questions that you want to ask? Uh, uh, please stop. Please, uh, you know, share. Uh, what are the other challenges that you might think um, that the youth are facing today's day and age? I'm waiting. Okay, you don't think there are any other more challenges that you are facing in this day and age? Okay, guys, then, uh, you know, then we'll stop here. I'll stop the recording and uh, we'll, for, for today, and we'll meet again the, in the following week. And, uh, you know, I, I hope we can put all of this, everything that we've learned today into practice. And I hope this will inspire and help you, uh, you know, in planning your youth ministry uh, better. Okay. So I'll just stop the recording now.